appreciate you having us. I do want to say thank you again for your cooperation with here on the Council Board. Um, Mr. Stavallos, your Planning Commissioner, and Ms. Kier, all nine members. Um, really appreciate all the cooperation and the time that you've shown throughout this process. Um, as you know, we have a space issue. Uh, it's not a surprise to see you at this point. Um, specifically at the elementary level, our phase six buildings are beyond capacity at this point. We've made multiple public presentations on this. Um, with your cooperation with my photographer, um, we had an engineer named one of our architects. I'm um, trying to find the most, the most um, fiscally responsible and efficient way to solve this issue in line with what is educationally sound. We want to make sure the school district continues on the rich tradition that the schools have always had. Um, because of that, we're looking to bring our sixth grade out of the elementary schools into the middle school for multiple reasons. The first is it's the most efficient way to alleviate space issues in five levels. Um, by drawing grades out of uh, classes out of all five hundred plus. More importantly though, it's moving to a more sound, more academically proven uh, model where students actually receive higher levels of academic instruction and content. Um, we've been playing uh, in many ways shorthanded our strategic planning committee it's about and that other districts are moving their kids to that model much more than we have to move here. And our state data for decades at this point has shown that the dip in our performance as expected at the middle level happens a year later, and we never fully recover. So if you combine both our facilities and space issues with this demonstrated academic need, um, it seems that for once both problems kind of solve themselves together. Um, but to do that, we need your help. Um, the district was prepared and, and um, determined to move forward, but we did reach out, and based on that, I want to thank you for offering to, in a way, obtain the property necessary for the district to do what is necessary to move forward um, in a more fiscally responsible and creative way to taxpayers. And at the end of the day, we both draw from the same source. Um, and if, if there are ways that we can work together to do that more responsibly in my economy, uh, such as this, I would certainly appreciate the taxpayers to understand that. At this point in time, um, planning wise, we shared plans with the commissioners a number of years back. Those plans have been significantly modified. It's interesting to me to hear you address the chip and parking issue um, because the number one thing after our academic piece of facilities issues happens to be parking. Um, we're not creating a parking lot. We will be planning to expand the middle school onto that property. But in order to do, uh, do that in a way that number one maximizes the space, at least plus, does it in a way that's up in line with code um, and safety requirements, and ensures that we have the highest level of academic space for me, um, that's what we need that property. So I appreciate the fact that uh, I'm going to um, the fact that you, something that the district actually is determined to do and that we absolutely need. Um, we're prepared for public presentations on this. Um, what we're looking for in the middle school, we have been wrapping that together. We've kind of worked on the one of the public schools plan, um, looking at all of the needs together. Um, there still are remaining elementary needs, and there's always the question of high school. Um, but this the purchase of this property for this year partnership with the public school board and board of commissioners. Um, it's something that will do great things. As we talked about 50 years from now, the uh, school district has always been one of the rules to catch us, and uh, we want to make sure that the next chapter is just as well. So we appreciate all the work that we do. Mr. Heisman, before we let you go home, sure. uh, late night, can you just explain to um, everyone of what's driving you know, the space issues as far as that one week that, as far as the special ed, because I put them prior to the class of 1983, and I know our class sizes were much bigger yes. then, as we discussed. So just to get into a little bit of how the footprint has shrunk in the reason why. There are a number of issues that people try to get on one versus the other, but generally speaking, to be specific, we kind of really them all out generally. First is that requirements have changed over time since you arrived in school, and how we're allowed to use this space is different now by state law. Um, we cannot put the same number of students into the same rooms as they were. Um, as school districts, as school buildings age, they get smaller even though physically they don't change size. It just happens. Second piece is our special services. Um, one of the most significant pieces of public education um, you know, has been to support students with special needs. I think it's a fantastic thing. It's one of the things that makes, it makes this country unique when it comes to public education. Um, but in order to do that, it takes more resources than most kids. Um, it has set altered our budget as a school district, and it's altered when we have classrooms where you have 25 or 30 students in a classroom that you have nine or nine. So we need two or three classrooms just to support the same number of students where we can have more. So that has changed as well. 
on top of the academic program this year. We offer more to students at every level. Um, specialized instruction in small groups as well as technology um, and radically different math and language arts. We have a rich program that goes beyond the music, art, and everything that needs space to do that. Um, right now we have a number of our elementary really sharing those rooms, which is not ideal, especially when you want kids to be able to work and create that work and leave it there and come back the next day. Those things are happening. So that has happened as well. On top of the fact that when we have the bars in refer to a time in the district had larger class sizes. Um, based on the way the town was laid out in 1983, yes. um, those houses could produce a certain number of school age children. Um, the township has changed dramatically since then. Um, we had fewer kids than we did then, and more space issues were born because of the changes I mentioned. My concern moving forward is that we know just based on experience that um, the existing, 1983, the existing layout of the town could produce more school age students than we have now. Since that time, the time has changed, and there are more residences from which we can receive school age students. So, if you couple the two of them together, there's every possibility for the depth of our that we could have gradually at one time, which we're showing at the elementary levels year after year, not just two or three sections of kindergarten, but four and sometimes five sections of kindergarten. And it hasn't proven to be a bubble at this point. We've maintained that for four years in a row, which is unheard of if you look at our past. So those pieces certainly have added as well. The other big piece is the elementary level specifically, I think, was a decision by the board, which academically um, was unquestionably the right decision, um, but you have to take into consideration budget and space, was moving from half day to full day kindergarten. So the same age, same number of kindergarten age students would take up twice as many rooms and could be servicing them for um, the entire day. I will say that feedback from the early teachers who have been here through that change, first grade teachers specifically, um, they notice a dramatic difference, difference of the preparedness, and it may sound silly, but of kindergartners who are aging up in the first grade, it makes a difference. Um, I'm happy to report that um, we've been hopefully transparent in our student performance data. The state released the first round of elementary park data this morning, and we turned it over and presented the initial findings to the Board of Education across the street this evening. We're having the parent academy, we've been inviting the entire community to hear that data more specifically tomorrow night at high school, 7 o'clock, in the room mm -hmm. um, Just to touch base on that, if you look at our scores, everyone in the entire state has been moved from the Aspen to the park. Proficiency levels have gone down because it's a more rigorous test across the board. My larger concern was we've had two decades of data showing where our students perform against the other students in the state. And so I was less concerned about the initial proficiency scores as to how our proficiency scores compared with everyone else across the state. And the good news is at the elementary levels, we far outperformed had in the past 10 years as far as student performance when you look at English and language arts. It's great. So the academic program changes and the work that our teachers on the ground are doing, um, getting our parents involved in strategic plan, uh, and the decisions that the board made to direct finances into the classroom. I'm hopeful it's showing an impact. And again, we have four consecutive years at this point of increased advanced placement participation at the high school level and increased sports on those assessments, and now we're showing the flip. You have a more rigorous test in the entire state and then down proficiency wise, but where we were at average or below average, we were significantly above for the first time. So I'm hopeful that on the academic side we're moving forward and continue working with you, um, you can make sure that the facilities are kind of educated, they can provide educational environment that's not just can hold our students, but provide the kind of environment our students are going to have. Bad news is wonderful to hear. We really appreciate you coming out this evening and explaining. Well, thank you for having me again, Appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. So, uh, first up, first, thank you for sharing that news. It's actually it's great to hear. Um, it means the academic changes that you made, the rigor that you've been putting into the system is actually starting to pay some dividends. It's really great to hear that. Uh, just uh, for me, uh, because I've been um, quoted as, as commenting on the what's driving the need for changes in our facilities. And, and I've summarized it uh, in a sort of, sort of a very brief, maybe more cryptic way than you just walked us through. But I want to make sure it's fair and accurate. I don't want to misquote. 20th century education, 20th century growth. Yeah, it's, it's sort of it's that, that, that cryptic. 21st century educational needs based on 20th century infrastructure. Uh, but the, uh, the essence of that means that uh, even if, 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 if even if we were to take the current volume levels of school, add to it the projected volume levels of school, 
That would be less than the volumes that we had when I was in school and went out. So one would think on a volume basis, what's the issue, right? And that's, the volume is not the issue. Uh, in, in, the, in the reality of where we are today, volume is an issue, but the reality of like, comparing it against history is just not an issue. Right? That's what I've explained. The drivers for me have been the decision that says we would absorb space differently than we use today. Full day kindergarten uses more space today than it used to because it's hand. We've had changes in classroom 